Is Wi-Fi not working? Looks like it is here for me. No, I'm going to be the car excited to look down there in front of the baby and the whole thing down there. You got it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think I'm connected to I'm connected to Buffalo. Picked it up, Buffalo. That's the one that's the one I've been in. Yeah, the county, the courthouse, I hadn't been able to. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with it. Buffalo What do you connect to? I'm using my phone. Oh, you're using your phone? Yeah. I'm draining the power of it. That's fine. Okay. We are up and running. So I will call this meeting to order. Wait, I gotta get the notebook. That's fine. Morning, Sandy. Fine, you okay? <clears throat> what does that mean up there? Scott says. All right, here we do not have any uh presentations scheduled for Friday. Brandon will be out, and uh, I would, uh, next Thursday will be the next meeting. I got Road and Bridge scheduled for the whole time, which 
I don't know if we'll need the whole time. And then Friday, 7 7, we have uh, pretty much all day. So uh, I was considering just canceling the Friday workshop. Which Friday? This Friday. It was canceled anyway, wasn't it? No, not it wasn't. It was in all the way. Was oh, it wasn't canceled. It's, it's scheduled. Yeah, it wasn't scheduled. scheduled. Okay. Yeah. We're scheduled to be here, but he's. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. I think so. I thought that means it. No. That's it. He just no, left it. He just left it. He just left it. Okay, so you're in agreement. We go ahead and cancel the Friday one. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we going? We good? We're not live, but we're but we're recording. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> so very good. All right. Let's proceed with our workshop for today at nine twelve. And uh, our first one is human resources. And uh, Jessica, you're on on stage. Good morning. Okay. Should have just had my copy of my budget. We should have a copy of the letter included in there that I submitted with it. Today, my main concern on my budget is. Converting my part time employee to a full time family county employee. And my letter gives you several different reasons of ownership why that is the case. Uh, most other counties that are in our population do have at least one full time assistant. For example, I'll just let you know, Wood County, who I just felt like was more our size related, they do have a full time. HR assistant, who they call her an HR clerk, and their population or their county employees are right at 200 and we're right at 245. So that's why I usually compare us more directly. And that position is actually paid currently at $20.93 an hour. That's now, my position, the way I did my budget was I put in her rate currently to show what a clerk. Say from the county clerk's office would be making where they make per hour right now is $14.96. And that's a dollar twenty higher than my part time person, which she's part time, so they made less salary. But in consideration for her going full time, I would like the salary to be based off of increasing for her up to whatever her to go to our upcoming beginning of budget year. With my letter, I attached that said, that she started back in the service awards. She owns this totally. She prints her own reports. She goes through it. She communicates to the supervisors. Uh, so she goes over and set up an agreement with a place here in Keaton that takes very good care of us. We, she works out a deal with him we provide the paper. So it's cheaper for us to buy it through our sources than to pay them to do it for us. And she has, we met with TAC, a wellness coordinator. And based on the fact that I wanted to allow her to have ownership, most part-time employees don't get to do those type of things. And our wellness coordinator worked with the specialist at TAC, and she is listed as the wellness coordinator for Bainsett County already. That does allow her to have the healthy county benefits, which are free of charge. And so that's very good. She also got to get, because last year y'all moved her from 28, 20 hours to 28, if you remember. She was a 20 hour part time, and in budget, I asked her for a 28 hour position. It also allowed her to get more involved with the benefits. And so, as part of her doing the new hire employees, she is able to sit down and discuss all of their benefits with them. We have implemented, now that she is here, some of you know, complaining. When we do our 30 day follow up, if the employees have to come back for a 3 p.m. meeting on Wednesdays once a month, that's where we follow up with them on any additional insurance or cafeteria plans, follow up with them on uh, how things are going and then there if they never need to great deposit, follow up on things like that. It's just kind of follow up with your new employees. And then we're meeting all the legal requirements of our cafeteria plan that were not being met previously. Um, so she has been here for exactly one year. She's 21, was one year for her. 
when she came in, she knew nothing about human resources at all. I actually recruited her from a full time position where she made about three dollars more an hour. Mm -hmm. and, and she came in willing to learn, wanting to learn, wanting to gain her permanent role with the county to provide for her family. I believe that she is very capable of uh, covering any time I'm not here. She recently has proven that when I had to be out for a couple of weeks. Everything ran smoothly. She reached out to me briefly. Uh, we we created that good working relationship. It's allowed me to have more time with unemployment claims, uh, comp claims. We have when I came in, the, the claims were that were just outstanding and bidding were several pages long, along with that for the different reasons with COVID, where they could apply for that for different for, for different assistance if they stay home. So if we've never been cleaned up, they still show us open claims. Currently now we show on our last quarter only two open claims. One who is nothing that we're paying on is a state claim from 2010 that we have received our money back with the state as long as it still shows open on their end. The other one just recently closed. It was a 2020 claim that the employee had won. Then it was still open, uh, filled in. I happen to be out uh, for our medical that day and could not, because I was on medication, attend that call. And I had a representative from TAC participating with Emily, and she handled that claim and we won that claim. Had I not been here, that would have just gone and stayed open. So it's very important that we have just two or three bullet points why we should have someone all the time. If there's an emergency, we're going to, the other option is going to try to pick up the pieces the best they can, but you've got to have someone here all the time to take care of the business. We have started recently, TCDRS is moving into totally digital. Don't know, I sent several emails out encouraging you to go on and register your online accounts. We started out with 150 current employees that were not registered at all. And in the last four months, we are down to 44 employees. That is excellent. We also now do online registration with all new employees. When they come in, we enroll them. We take the time to get them into our system before they leave. We get them into the TCDRS account before they leave. We help them on their cell phones get enrolled now. And that way, they, the employees are getting the best of their benefits. They're going to go online right then and start seeing, you know, wow, look what I can do if I stay here with the person just on a piece of paper and waiting for that. Piece of paper to come in the mail, they can look online and see you. So we worked with uh, TCDRS to get that done. And currently, planning on trying to have them out in September for able to do that, but they can do 30 minute sessions if employees want to schedule a time. That those type of things take a lot of time to organize and just stay in. You know, we recently did a nationwide visit and they come out. We had employees that have been here two years that didn't even know that they could enroll in that supplemental retirement. Mm -hmm. So we got that reinvented, started that back up, and I think we added about five or six employees because it had gotten down to what six or seven or was all we had. Yeah. And it stayed that way for, for a long time. And so now we're encouraging in, in the time that we're spending, especially in the 30 day follow up when they come back on that Wednesday, usually in the middle of the month. You know, did you think rolling that anytime you want to? So we're we're trying to do things the right way to human resources to take care of all the employee benefits and things like that. Cybersecurity, we also Scott does the initial download into them into the system for the email addresses. It now has become online instead of tag managing the users for us. This year we had to begin begin managing them ourselves. Meaning, we have to add or delete any users or so. We have to go in and re uh, set all the information someone hasn't taken it again on their email versus using the tag for that. So it was put back on us, and we're even going forward where we're going to be adding additional responsibilities for the administration of it going forward into this next year. I believe we have currently seven employees who are not complete with their cybersecurity that we have to be done with by July 31st. And that is with every new employee that's email eligible is complete. Previous years, 
it, we had no way to maintain it after like March. So all the employees weren't getting their cyber security training because we weren't open to be able to assign them to work. So that's things that we do every time there's a, a new employee that's eligible. Now they're getting that and then we're ensuring they are having it done between seven to 14 days because they're already on the computers using them and they need to have that training. That's just a few of the general things, not counting all the other things that we do and the phone calls and the visits where if you just spent time in there, you'd know that people feel now comfortable and assured that they have someone they can talk to about whatever's going on or time clock's not working, hey, can you help me? Can you check this? That's just been this week with our system issues. But uh, I believe we do need a full-time HR assistant role and her hours would maintain as 85 as anybody else's would. And that, that's my main focus on my budget. That's, you know, that's why I can reach out this. And then if you have any questions for me, I'll do the best that I can to answer it. I can tell you we're going hiring through May, we hired 95 employees. That was the May 31st. Fiscal year? From October 1st to May 31st, we hired 95 employees. Last year, all together, through September 30th, we hired 80. So you take that time of visiting them with visiting them two different times. That's a lot of interaction with your current employees, not being with supervisors and things like that. On the sad side is that as of May 31st, we have lost 77 of those. Maybe not that very, but that's the transition that we have. But just to kind of open your eyes across the board and looking at budgets. We're spending a whole lot of time hiring. And almost the same amount of time losing. So that if that kind of helps you see budget wise, salary wise, our benefit packages are great. I'd love to see us in the future increase our retirement a little bit. But I had seen equals of numbers for me before, and, and it's a lot of money to do that. So I support the salary increases first, but I would like to see us in the next year or two try to move up in our TCDRS percent. So we 77, we've lost out of May this year. Last year, the entire year, we lost 79. So we're a little ahead on the terminations this year too, but that just kind of gives y'all something to think about when you're looking at, at the salary structure and the reasons to maintain this. Every position takes training in, in anywhere you go, but specifically in these roles where we have in all offices, all departments, it's crucial that we start keeping people long term, longer than six months, longer than 12 months. And then let all these salaries and benefits pay us back for these people that we have here that we know can take care of our citizens that we need them to take care of. So this turnover is kind of wide. It's not going to be wide. wide. I just had my sheets that I did my printouts on on the net data and just coming up. I didn't break it down by departments because. If you have a department that has four people in it and they lose one every two months, their, their percentage is just as high as having 50 and then losing 10. You know, so I mean, I just went overall total just to give you general numbers because I don't think that we all probably just kind of knew how how large a number it is on our actual turnover that's going through. But that's just the major part because that's when I had to do all the budget stuff. So that's the numbers I want. There is from different departments across the county. This includes juvenile, road bridge, county offices, sheriff department. Okay. One one of the things you didn't, uh, I have talked with uh, uh, Jessica about additional responsibilities for this position that I would like to see us start implementing and one is employee badges uh where we actually take a picture and generate a ba official badge a government id that uh, can be used and that would help with courthouse security that would help uh, uh for the clerks that are in front of employees or in front of the, the public they can have the badge on so they know that they're they're official and that uh you know, just be a little bit more professional. So that's one of the things we've talked about. We and they, they agree. We did do that, and it's possible we could we could assist or 
uh, the sheriff's department does their own right now, and it's possible that we could help them do that also. The other thing that I've asked is that uh, the HR department cross train and be a support backup on the time clock on the time sheets and entering the time sheets and checking the time sheets before each payroll because uh, I, I feel like that uh, we need to have additional help for the treasurer Kenny in, in that regard and it's only a natural for the uh, time clock uh, to do backup uh, and support uh, for the human resources department because they're integrate they're integrated we have involved in that. We have visited together as a unit. I did discuss that with Emily and let her know, you know, maybe adding. We, we assist people with their time sheets now as needed after we have conferred with each other with officials, because that's who's actually in charge of their time sheets. Right. The issue. So, you know, we we know the time sheet process. So, what, what the plan to do is if we get this position moved into full time, is that Emily is first going to start. Able spends Monday calling departments on the small day home trying to get answers on certain things to do with time sheets or not being pulled in. Hey, what, what are you talking about? So that would give her enough time to be working on her things to be able to start doing those phone calls on Mondays to help speed up the process, take some of So we're kind of trying to do it in sections. So we have started discussing that okay. just to let okay. you know we are. Working on the game plan, if, if we get this approved to do those things, then then we've already taken the our conversation seriously. Okay. And I think we do the pictures already in the files that we right. discussed. But I have a county phone, so I think that we can probably start using it and we can just save them on there right. versus my phone or anyone's phone. But, but we graciously use the commissioner's prayer when we print a new to be color, so I appreciate that. <laughs> It had been 95 so far. We've only got it a little bit. <laughs> but we could, you know, we might have to purchase them and if we want to make them a little more professional, you can get the ones where you can connect your computer to and they turn out right there. Or if it's something we need to look at the at what Stacy has that she makes their badges on. Right. And I don't know if that can be well, well, we'll work out the plan. So, we we'll just need I don't to buy some stuff. What else we got? Okay. So, no, yeah, in, I, in my I salary, I just put a standardized amount and I'm in support of whatever the department has has the part of our salary that part of it as far as I'm concerned. My my focus is not on my salary, my focus is on bring some more in to help our county and we should be able to think about that. Seems like, you know, when IT decided that you needed to take over the email system, that, that should have been brought to the court. I mean, you've got your responsibility to somebody else, another department wants to give that to you. That they they do their the inputs and original into our cybersecurity list. We are listed as the administrators of it. So now, now TAC, where we used to have to reach out to TAC, do all of that for us, TAC gave it all back to the administrators. So, IT has done the part that they are required to do. You're just talking about the cyber security? Mm -hmm. We manage all the reports. That's what we know about that it needs to be done. But now we have add users and believe in as part of, became part of, they increased it to us and took it all the tag. Okay. And it really works a whole lot better. We're much more accurate than it going to their help desk and attack that would wait and probably two weeks before they had a new user in and then it, it's helped our county a lot. I think we're a lot safer than we were. And we're getting all kinds of crazy emails back and back. I can tell y'all there's no one later. <laughs> So the question is, do we want to approve uh, Emily going to full time? I'm for it. The approximate cost is going to be thirty thousand dollars. I'm for it. So we're looking at an extra ten thousand. The numbers I put up there, I tried to figure myself, but so don't hold me to those acronyms. I just went off of the position 
at the right of way it, it currently was for another part. Is if we're out there with that, but I'd like her to get whatever additional writings on top of moving her up. Otherwise, you think it's still a very low rate of pay for a long that is very important. That's everyone's personal information that's involved in that. And, this, this was requested last year, and, uh, and the court told uh, told Jessica to, to research this and and show us how it would be needed, and we'd look at it in the following year. That's when last year for the twenty hour position, and we got moved up fifteen eight hour position for me, which I'm very thankful for that. That's always nice. She's worked full time, forty hours. And I've been on vacation and different things like that. And she's actually very flexible. She's willing to, to do uh, different things. She got to build elections and that comes around and stuff like that as well. So she, she's looking to learn and grow with the county. And, and I'm so we're, we're going to grow and if we don't have someone trained to help us, then the other office is going to have time to pick up the pieces and run it like they used to. They're, they're going full quarters too. Well, you you trained her very well. I believe we've seen the positive impact of the current position she's building. So I, I think it would be beneficial to make it for What uh, additional responsibilities are we adding here? Helping the town uh, cards and employee and, badges. Okay. Which which is uh, a significant amount of time to get caught up with the 200. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I don't know what we'll end up doing with the sheriff's office. They'll, con they'll continue doing their own, and we'll take it over. But uh, but anytime we hire an employee, they'd have to generate the employee badge name and then time clock backup, which would be uh, helping assist getting all the time sheets uh, adjusted and corrected before payroll. So that's so that's the two. Week problem, two right. Would add that. Well, you could actually be proactive and do it every week. Every week, right. And and get, and get a week. That's the easiest process. If everyone that does a time sheet for their employee can go in and approve week one, except the shirt box, 207, because they're on a 14 day cycle. We'll take care of your week one and then your week two. You, you, know you review your week one, but you don't approve it. Okay. Yeah, right. you review it. Right. So, so those are the additional responsibilities at this point in time. Talking about adding 12 hours a week. So I'm for it. And so now we just Virgil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, uh, all right, let's move on to your expenses on your uh, budget. Yes, sir. So, office supplies, 2300 You have 2100 now, and you spent 1100 When Do you know of any significant changes? No, I do not. I just put a little cost of inflation on there just to do that. You get it or not? I'm I'm okay with keeping it at twenty one hundred. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, I was afraid of that eight for that box, but we don't have to. Right. Okay. And postage. Um, what do you mail out? I mail out leave of absence information. I mail out different things to the employee. Because you'll notice sometimes where we have insurance uh, reimbursements or collections mm -hmm. and things like that. I mail letters to them. I have started going to less letters because with people with email addresses, I'm trying to get email it to their email with a red receipt and say postage on that. So I have not spent as much as I started doing it that way. And that, that's really about the most thing. So, okay. that I know. I'll be knowing you know, a lot to retirees to keep up here on their insurance, but that's just the one time we're thinking about. Okay, so on the office supplies, we're going back to 2100, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and postage, I think you'd be fine at 200. I, because, I that. because you haven't even hit close to that yeah, uh, in your past. Training 3000. 
Is that for both you and Emily? That would be both. And I didn't go anywhere to train it this year. However, um, we are going, both of us, in February. We are going to the county, uh, Kobe County Boot Camp. I believe it's three days. And that would be the main thing for her to help gain a lot of knowledge for going forward. The we have certain incentives, two different incentives on on our benefit package that are half day vacations and our we well have a handful of people using super things as far as uh your healthy doctor visits and mm -hmm. weight loss programs and things like that. So that's going to allow the opportunity for us to really gain knowledge and her to grab a hold of that and maybe start having some little sessions and things like that for employees to come over. Then we're going to go again in March to the county management and risk, and they also do a big benefit program there. But then they also do other things. They do work responsibility, but employment, ability based HR, and those all the split out groups. So we won't necessarily be in the same classes. I'll let her choose the ones that she doesn't do about her and others. So I do have those two that coming. They will be in the next year, so I don't want to lose my budget on that. Okay. You have to have a certain number of hours a year. We do not. You're going to be it's pushing 3000 to cover both schools, I'm telling you, with everything going up and hotels going up. Well, we'll share. Uh, we'll ride we'll together. Okay. We'll share okay. So I, I, mean, I think we'll be okay with that. So my only question is, who's going to run the show while y'all are both gone? Well, the end of nobody, but that's training that we, she needs to go to, and I, I wouldn't have to go to the first one, but I would like to. But I'd like her to go with me to the other one, because I think she needs to tell us back to that training. Right. I mean, I can't. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and two levels. News and subscriptions. Okay, I don't. Are you part of the HMR, uh, HR I, professionals? I don't need that. There was a prior learning thing that they had had before the 41, and that's expired, and I'm not going to utilize that. I didn't use it last year. And then there was some kind of magazine subscription, and I didn't do that either. I just felt like it was not important. So do you need 215 subscriptions? I, I don't need any subscriptions. I just wasn't there. Okay. I mean, I'm just, if I keep a little bugger in there, I'll go on to it. You got to ask for it. Right. And miscellaneous. I miscellaneous. Think. Part of that comes from our Healthy County benefits. What did we get last year? 2100 or something? 2170? 2170, 2870, the Healthy County check. Yeah, a little over 2000 is where part of the money comes. And that's what we're going to use to buy the supplies. Okay. For here, that's right. that was get part of that's money that was given back to us. Okay. So, but do you need three thousand? Is fifteen hundred sufficient? Fifteen hundred is sufficient because anything on top of that will go into it as a bonus. So, but who give it to you to start with? Well, so, um, if okay. Pat give it, Pat gives our check. It's like yeah. one check. We budget for the check. You need the budget. We need a budget for the check, so we need a budget. So at least like twenty five. Right. So that, it was like was it twenty one seventy? Well, I didn't. I didn't think we could. Yeah, somewhere, but we have it. It's a little over two thousand. I'm not sure. I want to say like twenty one seventy. So you can't. She can't increase the revenue. And line because we know she's going to get it, so we'll go ahead and budget for revenue and expenses. Okay. I think she ought to get what Tech gives her. She does. She, she's, or she should, and, and she is. So we, so so Sandy budgets the revenue is coming in, and then the, ex, the expenditure of what it usually is. So technically, we should leave it at three thousand. That's right. That's exactly leave it right. at three thousand. And that's where you see that small number mm -hmm. so far. That's been our certificate stuff that we bought. There were there were pins already here, a bunch of them that mm -hmm. we saved money by not having to buy those. And then we bought certificates of bulk. And so that's a little bit of something else. Okay.
I'm good with all that. I do have one question. Oh, uh, <clears throat> is there a need to budget $5,000 for comp time? Because that, that time well, could... Well, I, I want to budget something for comp time. She's full time. And she might go over it. But I might have something in the comp time. Well, I mean, you, you can... Can't you just let her take off? I mean, that's that's what's best about it. I'm just asking. She yeah, to take off. Manage the hours to make sure they stay at four. Yeah. yeah. You got to have comp time to take off. No. She, she well, doesn't she get paid for it until it goes hours. over 40. Right. And, and, and it shouldn't. With, uh, with, she should be able to take off enough to never get to, get to 40. Yeah. yeah, I don't see her ever getting any very much, yeah. but... I don't see her getting 40 hours. And if she's working elections, that gets coded to a different account. Yes, yeah, she right? does. Yes, if she helps with that, that'll go over to the website. So, okay. Now, if we decide to start paying holidays, everybody's going to budget something for holidays. If we decide to start paying that. Well, won't we comp time? No, no, it'll have to be holiday time. We are, I don't follow. We already have it in the budget. We're paying them the holidays. What will we need to budget? If they work, you'll have to budget something for if they work on that holiday. Okay. okay. All right. It, no. I think it'd be rare that you worked on a holiday. Oh, yes. Probably you know, never. There we go. All right. Yeah. Unless the, the holiday falls and she's going to come in and do something or something like that. And, but a lot of times it's only not just being two or three hours. Well, the, I, I was going to say the. But if we take it all later in the week, it's still to be over. But he said only if we were to add a holiday, paying up the holiday, which I support that. That's what I was talking about on the time. HR, I mean, Treasurer works a lot on. If, if you have a holiday on the week of commissioner's court on a Monday or Tuesday, they they work a lot on that holiday to get ready for the payroll right. to be cleared on. This happened last, last week. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. Anything else? That is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Very All right. Well, I'm going to tack on something to your presentation while we got the time. Uh, put together. This has to do with uh, employee benefits. These are what we talked about uh, uh, before, and I would like to go ahead and, and review them with the whole court. Uh, and what what one of the things we talked about is vacation and sick time. And so I wanted to. Uh, Andy, can you hit X on that, or is that Scott? Stuck yeah. in. Yeah, somebody needs to help get Scott. We're, I don't know if it's good. The recording. The recording is going to run out of time for whatever reason. Uh, Hit that X on the top that top box. No, right there, that X. Yeah, well, that's not actually recording, I don't think. But we'll, do that. Let me see it so, we'll see. It. Just leave it. That's good. <laughs> so what I did is this comes straight out of the employee manual. This is the accrual for vacations earned. You see, as you go down for each year's service, you start with five days. Uh, and the, the amount of accrued time per pay period are going all the way down to uh, 20 years of service where you get up to 160 hours accrued, 20 working days, six point. So total maximum hours accrued according to the policy is 160. And that, which, that translates to 20 days uh, accrual. That's the maximum you have. So that's from our employee manual. From the employee manual, You've got the um, okay. They upgraded the meeting, so we're not going to run out of time. You've got sick time, which is accrued at the rate of three hour, three point oh eight hours per pay period. So, uh, and that's straight. It doesn't it's regardless of years of service and whatnot. So, you, the maximum amount of accrued sick time is 480 hours, which uh, translates to 60 hours, uh, 60 days total that you can accrue. Okay. So, if you add the two together, this is what you get right here the total time. 
it accrued per pay period would be, uh, as you see, and it's just adding the two together. And uh, two maximum accruals would be 640 hours or 80 days can be accrued maximum. So what, I, what I've discussed with and would like to see us do is to change sick time and vacation time to uh, personal time. Basically, it's the exact same numbers as the total of the two right now, but we're accruing it uh, as one category instead of as two as personal time. So you got the same, you got the same uh, maximums at the bottom that you have currently. So there's basically no change to the employee in the accrual of benefits. And uh, the proposal that I have is one, the personal time begins on the first pay period. 2024, it's difficult to start it on 10 1 exactly because uh, uh, of the timing issues. Uh, we may not have a full week or whatever. So it'd just be the first pay period of 2024. Uh, personal time will follow the current vacation time guidelines, which says uh, you would uh, <clears throat> up to a certain amount or the, the total time, and that uh, you're able to take the time uh, when you leave. You may, if you retire or you terminate, you pay it out to whatever personal time is accrued and available. That's different from what we have now. A current vacation and sick time will stop accruing the first pay period of fiscal 2024 because we're going to the personal time, okay? And that vacation time and sick time that has been accrued remains available for employees to use throughout 2024. Uh, so we'll still have that. It's kind of a transition period to allow us to do that. And then after 2024, accrued vacation, sick time, We'll move, we moved over to personal time. The crew will move it over to the personal time. If that would put them over the limit, then we might need to uh, do the uh, uh, payout sum or, or whatever, have them take, take it like we do now with vacation. Uh, people know that once they hit the 160 hours, they have to do the start taking the uh, vacation time or they will stop accruing additional one. So, uh, discussion. So you're lumping that together, sick time and vacation. Yes. What what we're trying to do is make it easier uh, for everybody, including including the uh, treasury department when they're uh, doing the uh, uh, both the accruals and the timesheets. We still have to transition it all out, but to to get rid of what's called vacation and sick time by the end of 2024. And uh, and so everything will be considered personal time. So they got one thing to do, and, and not two, and have to do it. And right now, sick time has criteria uh, on when it can be used and how it can be used. We have a lot of people that have a whole bunch of sick time approved up that they they don't want. They're not sick, and there's no need, for, you know, for them to take it. And uh, this gives them the opportunity to use the sick time for uh, vacation or time off or whatever. So what we're trying to do is avoid having to uh, uh, make employees uh, use, uh, let them, give them the option to use the time they've accrued for whatever they want to do and not uh, pigeonhole it into, into either vacation or sick time. That's, that's the objective. So, and we eliminate one more accrual that we have to keep. So when a, an employee, uh, Quits or resigns, how do you separate the sick time out from vacation time? Because he just gets paid vacation time. Uh, it would, the new personal time would be uh, follow the same guidelines as vacation. So the accrual that they get there, though you're going to pay them out for everything that they've earned. So sick time, sick time is, is gone. The sick time that they've accrued as of right now would still follow that policy. But anything else after that is uh, is now accrued under personal time and not sick. And then starting October, you're going to convert the sick time into vacation time. Right. So in 20, fiscal year 2025, there will be no no balances in any of the sick time or vacation. It will all be transferred or paid out or used, one of the two. So that would, trans that would be the transition. 
I'm, I'm not I'm not for this at all. That's a, you're, you're given a ridiculous amount of vacation time uh, that's, that's, that's not doing doing our taxpayers correctly. Uh, but, uh, sick time is sent in, set, put in there for when people are sick. And, and the county stepped up to allow them to get paid for while they're sick. Uh, we have a lot of people that will not place this. They'll blow all their time, and then they'll get sick. And they'll have, I've had people that's had strokes or heart attacks, and they'll get sick. And then they'll say, man, I'm in the hospital, and you won't pay me because I've used up all my time. And then you're throwing an added expense onto the taxpayers by paying them for all this sick time when we don't have to give sick time. That's a benefit. Uh, and, and that's why it's not in there that we pay it out. You so that so what you're saying is we need to reduce the amount of sick time. No, sir. I'm saying that sick time is fine just like it is. And, and, and we're not changing any time. Yeah, you you know, you, yeah, you are. You're taking vacation time additional to the one we you're, are you're doubling their vacation time and taking away. Oh no, you're you're what you're what, you're, tripling it. you're tripling it and letting them take off any time they want to, and then you're going to pay them for it when they leave. That right now we do not have that expense that we pay them for it when they leave, except their vacation. At four point six to accrual a week, the average employee can work a week, take a day off. That work one pay period, take it out. And you're going to see that. You're going to see people take off every other third because they can't. Whereas that sick time is for a purpose. They have a policy on sick time saying when you can use it for it. It's there when you need it. It's not there for when you want to go fishing or you just don't feel like coming to work. Very good. So who is supposed, who is responsible for policing or for monitoring the use of sick time and the approval of it? Your elected officials in your department head. And the employee. Okay. We're all responsible. And I keep an eye on mine. I've I had to write people up for abuse. I keep it all on mine. He was watching it, and every time that Thursday would fall around, he had a crew today, he'd take off. But we do have elected officials. I know for a fact we have elected officials that have told their employees, you've got a lot of sick time. You need to take off. Whether they're sick or not, they have told the employee, you don't need to be here. You need to use up your time. That is absolutely wrong, whoever's doing it, including Keith Pearson. If I tell the employee to take off and they're not sick, I am wrong for doing that. Okay. At what time, if somebody's sick for a long time, would the uh, administrator, the uh, well, if, according to this, is one of the three consecutive days for their own conditional debt of the family that they are going to qualify, then they should be applying for a leave of absence. That's what I'm talking about. Where does that, how did that offset the leave of it? It doesn't, they have to be paid from their sick time. They don't get paid out of anything else in their life. Sick time is what they have to be. Right. But so after, they, so, okay, they're, they're sick, they're sick for, they're sick. For how many days uh, personal time can you accrue? 80? 80 days. 80, 80 if they're days. sick for 80 days, for some reason or another, when does it, when does it, the, uh, you, you file the notice of the, uh, if they're going to be off three months, they use their sick time that whole time. That's great documentation. That's right. That's right. So that FMLA right. kicks in after the, would kick in after the 80 days. That FMLA doesn't pay. No. No. Their salary is paid for their sick time. That FMLA, right. for example, yeah. their job. Because yeah. they still have to get their pay through their sick time or their right. vacation time or their time. So uh, uh, I'm getting the uh, understanding that we don't want to change our vacation sick time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I don't okay. want to. At All this right. time, yeah. Then we will move on. The next item that we have. Back to it is holiday pay. And I believe we have an agreement on that in that uh, holiday pay is paid when earned. Uh, the same paycheck on which that is paid. Uh, there's no further approvals of holiday pay in fiscal year 2024. In other words, we Remove the accrual of holiday pay, but pay it out when it's earned. 
and the current accrued holiday hours are available through fiscal year 2024. And then any remaining accrued holiday hours are paid out in the fiscal year 2024 so that we don't continue on. So, so if you if you work a holiday, you get paid. That's correct. But if you don't, and yeah, no, just I agree with that. Right, yeah, great time. Yep, yeah. yeah, everybody gets that. I'm agree. I'm in agreement totally with that. We have some. So we're saying that the last check of this year, then the any available balance of holiday pay because we have some you know some that have a balance right mm -hmm. that's going to have to be paid out to them so everybody starts fresh and then everyone will get paid that, that's a lot easier process well if we, we pay it out the end of this year you're going to get paid for it right so the accrual will be gone if we pay it out the end of this year then the accrual is already gone we don't have to worry about it correct yeah, but we still put it in the system to show the total let's say 112 hours we put that in and it does every time they oh, okay. right. it's so, like a calculator. If they work a holiday, make sure I get this right. You get paid for the holiday. But if they actually work on a holiday, do they get paid on top of getting the holiday pay? Currently they get paid for the work hours in addition to the less they are 207k per person. They get paid out. Okay. So say he works say July 4th, say you work six hours or so, say you work eight hours in July 4th, something happened. You're actually getting paid for 16 hours. Correct. A straight pay. Okay. Not over. Right. Okay. And you have no budget. I mean, most of the time, most of the, most of the departments have a vacancy. So cover that, but some may not. So what if you come in and work four hours or three hours on a holiday? Just get the three hours of pay, pay in your eight and, hours. and your eight hours holiday. You just get paid for what you work on a holiday. Yeah. If you work one hour or if you work eight hours or, or if you work, go over eight hours. And it, it won't affect you very often, but it will occasionally affect you because there are some people that work on holidays. And it's not just the holiday itself. It's that week of the holiday. For instance, July 4th is a holiday. If I had guys come in getting trees off the road for four hours on Sunday the 2nd, that's in that pay week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're going to get that additional yeah. three hours on Sunday, plus right. they'll get their eight hours off. Right. Uh, While we're on the subject, I got a question. Well, just a second. One for three days. Okay. Just to let everybody know, we're already doing this at the sheriff's office. Yeah. We're doing it there. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're not budgeting uh, for it, right? Well, oh, I see. I see. We're using the money. I don't. That's for vacancies. Well, I'm sorry. That's all right. We have a special salary line that, that kind of helps. We've done that. Well, every department set up something. At comp time, when we changed it, wasn't that work the same? Nobody had comp time. I had to do that this year when all those guys retired. All that comp time went out. I had to move money into it because I was running out. Okay. But I, I do have a question, and this, this has nothing to do with this. If you come in on a holiday or overtime, even even if it's a, a regular day, say, for example, all right, you worked, my guys worked at 3 30, they got off. And then we get a call at 6 p.m. Hey, we got a tree down in the road. You go down there and it takes you 45 minutes to get that tree out in your back, your back home. Is there a minimum time or does he get paid for 45 minutes or is there a minimum? It's like, hey, if you come in in overtime, it's a minimum of two hours. Two hours it, it, is, is it? No. Don't have a policy on that? No. Okay. Pay time. Two hours, four hours. Okay. We also need to set up a
Alright. All right. I'd like to move on. So we're we're good on the holiday pay. Is that uh, in that is that correct? I'm good on it. Okay. Yeah, I believe everybody said yeah. Next, I'd like to talk about CDL pay, certificate pay. Uh, we have not found any other county that has uh, offers this, so we are going out on our own. There's three different kind of categories, past A, B, and C, and uh, that uh, would like to propose that we provide certificate pay to those employees whose job functions require a CDL. So those employees who have a CDL but don't aren't required to drive something, would not be eligible for the certificate pay, uh, just those that their job functions require it. And I'm going to suggest that we do $100 a month. That's $1,200 a year. And I estimate probably 20 to 25 people would be eligible for it, all in, most all on road and bridge. There may be a few others in other departments. Uh, I don't know if the bar marshal with the uh, bus that, that we drive. That may be another one. So, and that uh, employee will pay all the costs involved in retaining the license. The county does not do that. So that's uh, that's I think, what I propose. I think the uh, commissioners are to regulate that within their budget. I don't think there ought to be a specific certificate pay for CDL because you know CDL they leave here they gonna go to work for somebody else that has a CDL. They don't necessarily have to, you know. Uh, this is kind of fun. This is kind of deep for the sheriff's office too. They have to blow their CDL and buy that bus. Yeah, it's, that you, it's, 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 if it's part of a requirement for their job position to drive a bus. You know, and some of the transport officers, maybe, you know, I don't know if that, they would qualify if we got ever got a bigger bus to uh, transfer that uh but it's primary design for road and bridge, and if, if Mr. Melton believes that they can manage it within, then there's no point in, in offering it. That's just my opinion. You know, we we budget for people who have CDLs and give them $100 more a month or whatever. You know, we got a budget, and we figure out that budget with what we uh, our employees do if they have a okay. cdl we might give them a hundred dollars more than a month than someone that doesn't have a cd i do that now if yeah if a guy doesn't have a cdl he's not making well, as much as the guy that does then we regulate it within our own budget and, and i do more than i do a dollar an hour for a class a and 50 cents an hour for a class b no, i did tell us how much they were making Okay, so you're handling it within your own budget. So there's no need to move on. There's no, no need to consider it. So then cancel that. And it will not be available like the officials. Uh, holidays, back to that. These are the proposed holidays that I would recommend for next year. Uh, there would be 12, and that includes, uh, that means eliminating Columbus Day and President's Day. But these are the days that I would approve. I believe that, that uh, this would not be a significant burden on employees in the fact that what we plan to do on salaries and raise that we can, we, uh, can do this. And uh, what days are you eliminating? What president? Right. President's what? Day and Columbus. Day. I think you, we ought to be off on President's Day and take off Juneteenth. I'm going to work. I'm sorry. I'm just agreeing with Mark. Okay. Do what? So I'm just agreeing with you. So okay. uh, you, what'd you say? I think we should be off President's Day and take off Juneteenth. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. But are we in agreement? Go to 12 from 14. I'm agreeing with that. I am. With, because we're going to get the raise. But. I'm, I'm not. It's just it's a shame that we're trying to get our benefits up, our pay up for em, employees. And so, we're, okay, we're going to give you all a good raise this year, but we're going to cut back, take two of your holidays away from you. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we pick out, <clears throat> uh, we, we take this average from the, all the way across the state of Texas. But then when we started talking about our pay, we want to average just the, the, the five five or six counties around us. The five or six counties around us all give 14 days or 16 days. 
not according to that. Uh, I think it was Andy who had the deal where not some counties take ten. That's uh, Dallas. That's the, uh, that was Dallas County. Uh, some take fourteen, some take and, twelve, and would yeah, the average was twelve. Uh, I will say this: we added two holidays back in two thousand nine because of our pay. It was so low, and we had to take away uh, pay from employees and elected officials. So we added the the two holidays. We didn't used to get. The year we had furloughs. Yes, we didn't used to get that many, but we did have to take furlough days. But you you've got uh, uh, most of the time that this county is off on New Year's Eve. And, and that shouldn't be a holiday. If you're going to take one away, you take away New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve wasn't on the schedule. New Year's Day, but New Year's Eve was not this year's schedule. I think it was due to how it failed. I think on 2024s or 2023? This fiscal year, we're in turning with Eve. So oh, Saturday is not one holiday. Yeah. It, no, normally, if New Year's Eve is on a work day, then People give comp time and her vacation time. New Year's Eve would be on Sundays. Yes. So, yeah, it wouldn't. I've received several. We love the people uh, called her stop by since it was first brought up last week when you did your stop. I think you did a little mm -hmm. presentation overall. Mm -hmm. And um, the employee group. Upset. They want to try to give us money, and then they're going to take money away at the same time. So they don't have to give us as much. It's basically what I've been hearing. And I said, "Well, that needs to fall in the discussion." What do you mean right. we're it's taking money away? Because they feel like you're trying to give them money, but then you're going to take away a benefit to do that. Almost like so they're furloughed. Yeah, yeah, you're giving them a pay raise, but then instead of giving two pay days off, you're making them come. It's like you're giving a raise and making them work more to get it. Right. That's that's what's been brought to me just by different employees. I understand that. And you know, and that's their right to come and discuss that or call me and ask, is that what's going on? I think it should be discussed. But they're getting your weekly salary. But they look at it as they are because that's a pay note. Well, it was given to them at first because we had to take right. their loans. So I understand it with them, but I disagree with. I, I understand those sides. All right. So we won't make a decision. Do we want to make a decision now or we want to revisit this whole thing? Again? Him, doesn't matter to me. I mean, Might as well make it now. We're here. Okay. We're like you decision. wanted to do. Uh, Is this a schedule except replacing uh, President's Day instead of June change? I'll start. I'm for leaving it like it is. All right. Brandon. So what do you want to do? Do we we are to we are to I'm, consider I'm for, doing I'm away with the last days. holiday we got. You know, we other holidays have been in place. What was the last holiday, federal holiday that was was it June 17th? Yeah. Yeah. Then that's probably the one we need to delete. But remember they did that because there was a floating holiday. We did that, we added, we did away with the floating holiday and moved it to June 10th. The question, the question is, do we want to leave our holidays at 14 or go to 12? I want to yeah, leave I don't remember having a floating holiday. <laughs> what was the floating holiday? I don't, I don't remember I having it. <laughs> yeah, I take it whenever you want. That's not what I was told. That's not I know. I from that to specific and that's what the thing Was there a floating holiday saying years ago? No. Here's the day that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, that was that was years ago. So they put they put uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, and then last year when June the came become a federal holiday, it was full of New Year's Eve. Gotcha. And personally, with you know Keith, what you're saying, I'd rather have New Year's Eve than. June 10th. I agree. Well, you can establish what that uh, it, take yeah, off. I'm just saying, leave it. change it up each year based on where the, we, where the dates fall. So, this this is 
since uh, I definitely think President's Day needs to be a holiday. Yes, President's Day. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So. We, we set the holidays every year. Well, all the, the it boils down to do we want to cut two holidays or we want to leave it at 12, go to 12 or leave it at 14. I got I'll, leave it at 14. All right, I'll make a suggestion. We put President's Day, we take out Juneteenth, we add New Year's Eve, we got 13. We'll figure there. all that out later. <laughs> Tell me how many holidays. I want 14. I can't believe it. What does other counties do? Do we know well, what? We'll what are they? Keith, Keith. I'm done. I got it. All right, let's 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 look and just see. I mean, we're just, in your time, Scott. I'm sorry. I bet we do 14 and we'll get the birthday back to Juneteenth. They want to take a birthday on Juneteenth again and get New Year's Eve. Yeah. So New Year's Eve and the birthday. But keep in mind, New Year's Eve is on Sunday this year. You give them a holiday on a day they're already out there. Well, that's every seven. I mean, it's every seven. I, years. I, I don't think we're going to give New Year's. New Year's Guys, Eve we set these work. holidays every year. We don't have to talk about when we're taking off. Just tell me how many days we're going to take off. That's the whole question here. We'll come back when the commissioner's in. court has to set them up. If you're fine with 14, I'll go with you on 14. Uh, I, I say leave it at 14. Right. But I do but, think we need to change it. We'll, we'll talk about that when it's all time. Right, I'll go with you on 14. We can't what. change them right now. Oh. Oh, you can't okay. change them until the new year's part. All right, Dallas County has 10, Collin County has 14, El Paso has 16, <laughs> uh, Harris County has 11, uh, Coughlin County has 15, uh, Smith County has 14, and this county has 12, and it didn't print the county name. I think that's Wood or Range, I can't remember which. Gray County has 11. Uh, Henderson County has 12. Hunt County has 12. Wood County has 14. And Benedict County, and then Rockwall County has 14. So, kind of an kind of average of 20. I think we're good like we are. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We won't change the number of holidays for this, uh, this next fiscal year. Yeah. So now we will move on to. So which, which one, wait, wait, wait just a second now. Right. We're discussing them. Which ones? Did, what did you want to do? I think we should take take President's Day, get rid of Juneteenth, and add the birthday. I mean, uh, President's Day will be placed with Juneteenth and New Year's Eve. And I guess it's the 14th. We got President Day now. Okay. New Year's Eve on oh. Sunday. I, yeah, I don't yeah. care what day it is on what it is this year that we need that holiday because next year it won't be. No, we can we can set them differently each year. Oh, every so year we set them. Yeah, every set year we have to set them. We By law, know. we have to set our holiday. Right. Every we can year. change it up if we need to. Uh, it's just the number of holidays is what we're looking at. So, uh, well, we definitely need President's Day in there. Well, we're going to keep it right now. The way we... yes so it won't be an issue we'll have presidents and columbus day in there so all right is there any further discussion if not that's uh we will move on to, <laughs> to it mr thank scott you. thank you for extending the time on that zoom meeting i was panicking there for a minute that we we're gonna have to be like hello what do we got now? 14 days. That's what we got. 14 days. 14 All right, so keep me up in 14 days and then I guess they don't make them. Before October 1st, we'll yeah. set what days? Well, all the 14 days. Yeah, it's going to remain the same. Part of it was last year. We didn't change anything. Okay, so how did the one they started doing what well, he, he was wanting to say? Well, this was this year, not there. All right. Yeah. 